Hi, my name is Rebecca and welcome to Yarn and Pajamas. Today is crochet podcast number 72. So I don't have any finished objects to show you guys this week and it's been two weeks since I, you know, made a podcast. I didn't make one last week because I really didn't have anything to show for the week and um, really I don't have a whole lot to show this week. So I'm just going to jump right on into it. It'll probably be a short one tonight, guys, but I'm going to show you guys what I have been up to. I've been doing some stuff, just not a whole lot. So I have been working on the Sunny Mandala Blanket, and I have been working on the Small Squares. So the Small Squares is comprised of two patterns. It's rounds 1 through 12 of the Sunny Mandala, and it's um, the rows to show you how to turn it into a square are free. And it's rows 13 through 17. So that part is free on her blog. And the lady's name or the name of the shop, I'm not sure, or the blog name is Lila Bjorn. I did not say that right. I'm very, very sorry. But um, I found it on Etsy. And I have completely completed the Sunny Mandala. So I have it downstairs and I've been working on these small squares and I've been doing it um, every time I wanna say construction style, but that's not it. And someone, Sue, told me what it was called, like where you do like each round on each one, assembly, assembly style. So that's what I'm doing. So I have one square, small square, completely finished. Oh, it's right up here, let me just grab it. Sorry about that. But here is the small square, all finished. It's on the blocking board, I didn't take it off. This is what this will look like when it's turned into a square. So I have three more squares to finish round number 13. So this um, green, green, pink bit is round number 13, and then I will be able to start making the squares. Now I don't think that I'm gonna make all of the squares all at one time. I wanna get all of the um, centers done, and then I will probably start, like I'll probably make like a few of the squares, and then I'm going to start on the second part of the blanket with the mandala, and it's called the sunny border. So once the sunny border is complete, I will attach the small squares around the sunny border. So I'm hoping to work on the small squares and the sunny border at the same time so that when I'm finished with the sunny border, I'll roll right in to attaching these squares to it and I won't have a whole lot to do. So I have three more to go. I didn't bring them all upstairs. There's a big, the stack is big now. I just brought the one. So I have um, 19 all together and I have three more left to get this pink round on. And it's a really simple round. It's, um, you know, chain, let's see. Um, increase, so I do four and then increase all the way around. So it's four single crochet and increase all the way around. So I'm using all yarns I bought from the Hobby Lobby. I um, bought all of these yarns specifically for this pattern. I had like a few of the colors in my stash, so I didn't really have to buy them. But so the blue in the middle is um, Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn. I think it's medium blue. Let me see here. <sighs> I should have been a little bit more prepared. Do you guys hear that train? <laughs> yes, it's um, Hobby Lobby's um, I Love This Yarn medium blue. And then the next color, you see that orange? You see it here and here. And it is Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn in Desert Glaze. And then the next color is, you can't really see it here, but there's pink. It's the pink right here, and it's the I Love This Yarn in Hot Rose. 
And then the next color is this purple and it's, I love this yarn in amethyst. Um, the next color here that we see is green. Such a pretty green. And it's, I love this yarn in key lime. I was a little iffy about the key lime at first, but you guys said it looked great. And the more I look at it, the more I just love it. And then you can't really see any of it on here, but you see it on the back of this one. It's that yellow. And it, this yellow is a crafter's secret. I think is what it's called. It is, yes. It's from Hobby Lobby and you buy it in those big massive rolls now, the jumbo rolls, and it's just called yellow. So this is what the back of it looks like, guys. Every round is a different color. Yep. It is really pretty. It is really fun to work on. I really enjoy it a whole lot. And I can't wait to get back into it. So the next thing I've been working on is um, Coco's Crochet, um, the cow. So I call it the Coco Blanket. So uh, Litza at Coco's Crochet is hosting a six month crochet along and it is, um, she has a calendar and each uh, for each month she picks out colors that she sees within the calendar it's a calendar of sydney australia her hometown and she puts colors in a box and she draws three colors out and then she has a wild card so we do two months in one so the cal is we'll do a whole year on the calendar but we're going to do it in six months so this month is um, March and we just drew the June colors so we're already on June which is um, month number six so we're halfway um, through the cow already so the first color she drew was this well not this gray but gray and I got my gray color put in now I chose to do a um, corner to corner blanket. I did not know how to do corner to corner. I have wanted to learn how to do corner to corner for the last, I think it's been a goal of mine since I've been making YouTube videos. So since meeting you guys, it's been a goal. I really always liked it. I always thought it looked super squishy and super mm, cozy and it really is. It's a nice fun stitch but I was always scared of it. And I have since started two blankets. I have one that I haven't worked on in a while. Can't really see all of it here. But after I put in June's colors, I have three more colors. And after I put those colors in, another train. It must be a train night. I start decreasing. Now, I don't know how to decrease yet. So I'm going to have to start watching, um, Terry to see what I'm going to be doing next month on the decrease because I learned how to crochet the corner to corner stitch from Terry at Yarn Joy Podcast and I will definitely put the links down below because not only do not only does she teach um, the left handed version because she's a lefty she also does a right handed version for you know people like me that are right handed so it doesn't matter which hand you crochet with she has a tutorial to show you how to do it and I really like that so I am going to be working on getting the rest of my colors in so I can take a cute picture and post it on Instagram and put it in her hashtag um, if you guys don't know Lisa over at Coco's Crochet, I'm definitely going to put her links down below. Go and check her out. Um, it's not too late to join this cow because she's actually doing her cow is a stitch sampler. So her blanket is absolutely gorgeous and each month features a new stitch along with the new colors. So you get like um, a two for one kind of thing. It's like two surprises in one. You get a surprise stitch and a surprise color. So it's a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying myself and I have all of my colors down here and I can actually tell you the colors this time 
because um, they're all from Skeins. And this is a stash buster, guys. A stash buster. All of this yarn is from totes in the back. Some of it are coming from this, which is scrappy scrappies. And some of it's just coming from skeins that I have in my totes back here. Well, this gray is Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn, gray beard. And then um, one of the colors is green. And I chose this very um, neon-y green color. It's Hobby Lobby, I love this yarn. A lot of the times when I say that, I always say I love this cotton and it's not cotton. <laughs> But I don't know why I do that. I think it's called Limelight. Yes, Limelight. Um, the, one of the colors she chose was orange. And I am using Carrot by Red Heart. Um, the wild card color was Pumpkin. So I'm going to be using pumpkin from um red heart super saver and oh guys sadly it has outgrown my chicken bag <laughs> this bag um is from no catchy name it's got all these um cute chickens on it and it's yellow and it's very fun and vibrant but guess what guys it is too big it is too big so i'll have to be putting that up and it's now living in this big old cooler. <laughs> this is like a cooler I used for the beach one year and it, that's what it's living in now. Um, yes, that's the gray beard. So I'm using a 6.0 millimeter hook to work on this project. And there it is again. So one of the things that I don't know about is the two orange colors were drawn together. So orange was drawn last and then pumpkin was the wild card. So that's gonna put my two oranges together. And I was like really on the fence and and today I asked her opinion. She's like, no, break up the oranges, you know, don't do it in sequence because it's gonna be like a big odd orange stripe in the middle. And she's like, and I'm not even, cause you know, orange is her favorite color. And she's like, I'm not kicking it, but it might look weird. Um, so, but I saw that Terry at Yarn Joy Podcast had put hers in and her oranges were two different shades and it kind of looked okay. So I'm going to give it a try. If I don't like it, I can always, you know, rip it back out. So, yeah. Okay, guys, that is it. I'm going to have to take a drink of water. Um, it's been very warm here today. And I have um, been moving about a little bit today. So, I'm like parched. Me and my mother actually went out shopping today. We had fun. It was a nice fun day. We went to... Bath and Body Works, which was what I was originally going for. They have, um, I love, we love the foaming hand soap and we usually only buy it during that, um, sale that they have where it's like $2.95 or something like that per hand soap. But the soaps are generally Christmas flavors. So we always have Christmas flavors, you know, floating all year long. Well, my mom bought these cute little bunny rabbit um, soap holders. And so then I ordered some springtime soaps from the Bath and Body Works online. Just done it. And one of the flavors was Cottontail Cake Pop. And let me, uh, let me just tell you guys, that is the best smelling soap that I have ever smelled in my whole life. If you like, like, um dessert smelling like candles and soaps and stuff that soap is amazing and i was like i need to buy some more of this talking to my sister today we get on you know online we're looking and they don't have it online anymore i'm gonna have to go to the store and get some of this because i can't be you know just be one and done and, and never have it again you know 
So that was the goal. We went to um, Bath and Body Works and and then I was like, oh, well, I need to go over to Michael's to get um, some craft paint. I went to Michael's and I bought something else besides craft paint. And this is not yarn related or crochet related, but I just could not pass it up when I seen it and I'm super excited about it. It is this book. The unofficial Disney Parks Drink Recipe Book. It says, from Lay Fuse Brew to Jedi Mind Tricks, 100 plus magical Disney inspired drinks by Ashley Craft. She is the author of the USA Today best selling The Unofficial Disney Parks Cookbook. So, I'm super excited about this. I will let you guys know whenever I make a drink, if you guys are interested. But, I thought it was just like a fun, quirky. And, I know that they're going to have like a Butterbeer inspired one from Harry Potter in here. And, I am super duper excited. So, if you guys are interested in knowing some of the drinks that I make and what I think about them, just let me know and I'll try to incorporate that into the podcast somehow. So yeah, I thought, you know, the first person I thought of when I seen this was Michelle at Pixie Marie Creates because she is a huge Disney fan and I was like, I could see her like making up one of the drinks out of here every single night. So yeah, so so that's something that I got today that was not yarn related. But then we went over to Five Below, which was right next door. Looks around, we got some Squishmallows. They had these like tiny ones. So I got one for my nephew, I got one for me. My mom got one, so I just went ahead and threw it in with mine. And then we went next door to Ulta telling you and then I done some damage in there I bought me some perfume and you know perfume is not cheap but I was like on it was like the bare bones of the bottle it was like when you have the sputtering squirts that's coming out of it and I was just like I gotta get some more as bad as I hate to but yeah so that was fun today oh and guys do you want to see who's back look who's back Oh, I dropped her purse. Went under my chair. Rosa's back. And guess what, guys? She won first place in um, the competition. So, there were um, two categories. One was like arts and crafts and like drawing type thing. And then the other one was poetry. And she won first place in her category. And that was super exciting. I was super happy because Rosa is super cute. So, I did decide I'm going to um, stitch her little jacket close here. I did decide that today. But I decided I wanted to make a stand for her. And I will um, record a little clip of it. I'm hoping to get it finished this week. But I may um, already have it at work because I want to take her back to work and display her. Um, at least for a little while, I think. But I am going to craft a stand myself, and I will show you guys when I get it finished, if it turns out, even, if it even works. So, um, yeah. So, Ross is back. Yay! Oh, I dropped her purse, and I wanted to show you guys what we done. Oh, here it is. So, um, when I went to work... Me and my supervisor were talking, and I was like, I wanted to make a little bus pass for her. And she's like, oh, you totally should make her a bus pass. So, I made a little bus pass that says, Bus Pass, Montgomery, Alabama, 1955. And just shoved it down in her little purse as a little extra thing. So, Rosa says, I don't want that bus pass. So, yeah, because, you know, they boycotted the bus system. Yeah, so, Ross is back. Okay, so, I'm telling you guys, that's it. That's all I've done this week. Uh, I feel like this is a weird podcast. But, there's one more thing I want to talk about before we go. I do have some show and tell, but I'm going to do that next week. 
um, because, um, not really like anything, but I don't want to do a lot of editing tonight because I waited so late to get this done. But, and I want to be able to like spend my time and talk about everything. So I'm going to show that next week. So if anybody has any show and tell that they want to get to me, I will definitely have a whole big segment for that next week. But I want to talk about this pegboard back here and I tell you guys a little bit about the pegboard and how it came to be. So, um, many, many, many moons ago when I first moved up here, I was perusing around on Pinterest and I seen this picture. I'm going to pop it in. And I thought, I love that. I want it in my bedroom. Well, the problem was, is at the time I crocheted, but I did not crochet like I crochet now, nor did I have an extensive yarn supply like I do now. So back in the day, I only purchased the yarn that I needed for whatever I was working on. And I only worked on one project at a time. I did not work on multiple projects. So if I was making a mermaid tail blanket, I started it and I worked on it continuously until I finished. And then I moved on to the next thing. So I bought the pegboard. I went to the Ace Hardware store. I told them what kind of walls I had. He told me what I needed and I somehow managed to get this hung up and it was difficult because the little thing I had to poke this little thing through that like it went in and then it like splayed out like this and like it pulls and it hooks into the wall and had like these bumper things it was just and I'm not handy like that I got this board hung up and I probably had like, I started caking up my yarn. I probably had like nine little cakes. And I'm like, that didn't even fill up like a little section. So then I was on the mission to find just whatever yarn I could find to get it up on that board so that I could achieve that Pinterest moment like that woman on my yarn wall, you know? So I found some yard sale yarns and I cranked it up, rolled it up into little cakes and I did manage probably to get a little bit less than half of this board covered in yarn. Um, the yarn did not stay up very good. Um, there were significant gaps in between some of them. Um, I just didn't, after months of looking at that, pegboard. I was like, I don't like it. So I took it all down. So all that was hanging up there for the longest time were these little pegs. That's it. These little hook things. Well, one day I was at Joanne's and I was getting ready to start a project. And I seen these very colorful hooks. Clover, Armoire hooks, but at the time I was like, Armoire? Why would they name it Armoire? <laughs> yeah. So I seen these Clover Armoire hooks and I was like, oh, those look fun. Let me try one of those. I really liked it. So when I opened it up, I hung the packaging up on that peg. And then when I was done with the project, I put the hook right back in the packaging and hung it up on the wall. And then I bought another hook for my next project. And so it went. That's how I amassed this collection behind me, was buying them. For the longest time, I bought them one by one whenever I would start a project that needed one of the hooks. And then something fantastically wonderful happened in my life. The Joanne that is up in Goshen was moving locations and they had their stock in their store like 70 to 75% off, like everything, including the Clover armor hooks. And 
I got the whole steel set up here for 75% off. And every hook that I did not have, I bought all of these hooks. Now, some of these hooks I did purchase off of Amazon. And they are like the like 2.5, 2, and the 3 millimeter hooks. I bought those off of Amazon. I think that they sell like those like in maybe like Japan or something. But I bought those off of Amazon so that they would go in a row. So I've got them all hung up there. Now I do have other ones that are not in packaging. I had one of the, like the big packages that I got at Joann's as well. It was now yeah, 75% off. Um, I'm missing a few. The um, six millimeter is down here. Um, um, I think maybe a five millimeter is in a project bag somewhere as well. I'm not really sure. But, yeah, I have some of those. I do have my 2.5 is missing. I don't know where it is either. And my 10 millimeter is missing. I don't know where it currently is. Oh, I do know where it is. It's in a project bag over there. Yes. But I'm going to show you guys the rest of the board. So hold on just a second and I will take you over there, okay? Okay, guys, so we are back. Now, like I said, I'm the one who um, put this pegboard up, so um, it may not look the greatest. I did just recently um, paint it gray, like within the last year or two. And then I also made this little shelf right here out of a piece of wood that I found. And I, let's see if you can see. See how it just sits right up on top of some of the hooks. I did crochet a little piece and glued it to it. This right here is, it's metal. It's like a metal sign that I painted gray. And this right here is magnet. And it, oops, just hooks right to it. But these are the Katona cotton colors. I don't know, I hope I'm not making you guys sick. Those are the numbers. And then on the back, I wrote the names of it. Over here, I have some stitch markers. This is from um, T. Doddles, all of her hooks, all of her bag things that I used to do. And then these are just random ones. This little dude right here, my nephew saved this card. It's a Pokemon card. And it's like a knitted or crocheted version. And he saved that for me. So I really appreciate that. And I told him I'd always hang it up. And then you have the Clover collection. Now, back over here in the corner. It's not really seen a whole lot. We've got my um, Clover pom-pom makers. There is another one down here. I'm currently using one of it for the bunnies. This is a clover. Um, it makes the cord stuff. I can't remember what it's called. It's called a wonder knitter. Here's a clover like flower loom kit that I got at Michael's. It was on clearance. And then here is that clover tool that I use for um, doing the felting into my um, gnome beards. And then here is a, a pair of really expensive scissors that I got on sale at Michael's. They were on clearance. I would get to use them, but um, I'm told that that's a really good brand. So, yeah, hold on, and I'll switch you guys back around. Okay, guys, I hope that little uh, clip didn't make you sick where I was showing you the board. But yeah, so that is my pegboard and how it came to be. Okay, guys, well, I am going to let you go. I will talk to you guys in the future sometime. I'm sure you'll be seeing me um, sooner rather than later. Um, I want to thank you guys for um, hanging out with me. 
always appreciate you guys um, taking the time to spend time with me because I know our time is precious and that you choose to spend some of your time with me. It really means a whole lot and I really, really appreciate that. So if you liked hanging out with me tonight, make sure you give me a thumbs up. That helps me be seen by other people so other people have a chance to meet me and maybe, you know, want to be friends with me. And, and that's why I am here. So I would really appreciate that. And of course, I always love reading comments and answering comments and so if you want to leave a comment and let me know how your week has been going what you've been working on just whatever you want to let me know just leave me a comment down below and remember that all of the links that i talk about are listed down below and if i ever forget anything just let me know and i'll go and search and put it in there and um, I'm not affiliated with anybody. I just put those links down there because I love when people put links in their videos so that I, when I see something that I want, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go get that. And then I just go click on the link. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.